today on Tri Center, we recap the Ironman 70.3 California race and the winner from Saturday's race, Marinda Carfrey, joins us in the studio. Tri Center starts now. Welcome to Tri Center, your source for triathlon news. I'm Ann Wessling. A couple of athletes were noticeably absent from Saturday's Ironman 70.3 California race. While putting in one of his final training efforts for the Oceanside race, American Jordan Rapp was seriously injured in a hit and run accident in Oxnard, California on Tuesday, March 23rd. Rapp is currently in the intensive care unit at St. John's Regional Medical Center in Oxnard, California and suffers from a broken clavicle and scapula and contusions and lacerations on his head and neck. Another American, Andy Potts, also missed Saturday's race, but for a much more celebratory reason. Potts and his wife, Lisa, welcomed a baby girl named Sloan on Wednesday, March 24th. The couple also has a son, Boston, who is two years old. Potts tells us he'll open his season at Ironman 70.3 New Orleans on April 18th. Now, turning to Saturday's race. The day saw two of the strongest runners in the sport flex their cycling muscles. Both Michael Rayler and Marinda Carfrey worked their way up to the front of the bike and then used their running skills to propel them to their first wins of 2010. Athletes turned out before dawn to prep their bikes and dial in their transition areas before amassing for the pro men's start at 6.40 a.m., just as the sun was rising over Oceanside Harbor. The intensity of the day was evident from the beginning as six men headed into T1 within 15 seconds of each other. Once the athletes took to the bike course, they faced the ripping winds of Camp Pendleton and a surge by Trek K-Swiss teammates Michael Raylert and Andrew Yoder. 20-year-old Yoder briefly broke away from Raylert to take the lead in his second ever half Ironman distance race. But the pace proved to be too much as Yoder slowed significantly at the 40-mile mark. Raylert used his short course skills for a quick transition, carrying the lead throughout the half marathon and into the finish shoot for a winning time of 3.58.27. Last year's winner Matt Reed moved up two positions during the run for a second place finish at 4.01.17. Denmark's Rasmus Henning struggled on the bike but bounced back with a 1.14.10 run to take third. It was quite frustrating and uh, it came to a point when I, I, I just I thought about just the all not even trying anymore but but then I I, I, I fought my way through the bike recently and then then uh, I mean luckily I, I was able to put out like a half decent run so I, I managed to get on the podium. You know the bike took a lot out of me today I, I didn't bring uh, you know a good good fitness level uh, with me for the bike so I um, really struggled from about mile 20 onwards and losing a lot of motivation out there and you know my mind was was not very uh, positive you know for me to get second today is it's amazing. I'm, I'm really happy to, to pull it off. I wanted to prove myself that I'm the best athlete in the world, that I'm the world champion and have to be proud of it or can be proud of it. And today, yeah, it works for me. Actually, when I got off the bike and I know that I have a kind of gap, I, I was thinking to win this race. And so I wasn't really like afraid that some, somebody is coming closer. Or Of course, Maddie is a great athlete, but I thought if I have a solid run, I still can make it. But yeah, the last two miles, it, I was really suffering and I even was thinking to win this race. I even was thinking to finish this race and so I'm quite happy right now that I, ooh, that I made it through. In the women's race, Great Britain's Leanda Cave and Australia's Pip Taylor came out of the water nearly two minutes ahead of the other contenders. Cave quickly took advantage of the gap and rode to the front. A chase group featuring Marinda Carfrey and Samantha McGlone caught Cave on the hilly section of the course. Cave stuck with a slight lead heading into T2. But it would not be Cave's day as Ride turned to run. Carfrey immediately found her stride and passed Cave just minutes into the first lap. In the end, Carfrey's record-setting half marathon of 117.34 was too much for anyone to contend with. She took the win with a time of 4.20.29. Scotland's Leslie Patterson also posted a strong half marathon, running from 7th off the bike to 2nd at the finish line, just over 4 minutes back. McGlone came in at 4.26.43 for the final podium spot. 
We all rode together. We were all riding hard. It was good. Some of us were trying to close the gap early. Um, some people were trying to um, sit in a little more. The run, uh, I started out behind Brittany, and it was pretty obvious qu quickly that she was running fast. I caught Leando with a couple miles in, and I held second for a long time. I haven't done much run training. I've been biking all winter, so I'm actually pretty happy with how my run went, considering. I'm so stoked to, uh, you know, to start the year with a win is, it's nice. It's nice to start the year off on the right foot. So I wanted to make sure I put in a good performance today, and I'm really pleased that it came together. When we come back, the winner from Saturday's race, Marinda Carfrey, joins us in the studio. Hi, Andy Potts here. Suunto gave me seven T6C watches, but I only need one, so I'd like to give six away to you. I train with this watch. I race with this watch. It's a fantastic watch. Go to competitor.com slash Suunto to find out how you can win yours. Australian Marinda Carfrey finished second in her debut at the Ironman World Championship back in October. And just two days ago, she defended her title at Ironman 70.3 California. And now she joins me in the studio to talk about those races and what lies ahead for 2010. Thanks for joining me, Marinda. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. First of all, let's huge congratulations for you on the big win on Saturday. How was that? You know, it was great to get um, the season off and rolling, and that's my first race since Kona, which is five months ago now, and um, it's just really nice to have a, have a good start to the season. You posted incredible improvements on your swim, bike, and run splits. What was your strategy heading into the day? You know, I don't really have much of a strategy racing 70.3s. I just go in and I race as hard as I can from start to finish. Uh, I think, you know, with the training that I've done, I, I'm able to go as hard as I can for, for the whole race. So you looked very strong on the bike. Tell me what it felt like surging, you know, up to the front of the pack through Camp Pendleton. You know, it felt awesome. Uh, I think we still had, I was, we were in like second, third and fourth at that point and I had McKeeley and, and Sam, Sam McGlone and Sam Warriner and also Heather Wirtle in our pack and they're all really strong cyclists. So to, to hop on the front of that pack and then to actually ride away is, is a nice feeling because the, the, the bike is where I need to work the most uh, this year. Now, you're obviously an incredible runner. We interviewed Michael Raylert <coughs> afterwards, and he said that he really feels the need to prove himself as an all-around, one of the best triathletes in the world. Do you ever feel the pressure to prove that yourself? Certainly. You know, this is triathlon, and, you know, I'm renowned as a runner, as you said, and I think, you know, I'm working really hard on my bike, and I need, I, I'd like to get the recognition as a cyclist, but there are still girls that are, you know, head and shoulders above, and Julie Dibbins and obviously Chrissy Wellington. Well, you're doing a pretty great job, and you're pairing an incredible bike-run combo. Now, you've said that in your training, you've been training to run off the bike as opposed to just purely running. Mm -hmm. how, how do you do that in training and on race day? Well, I think it just comes down to like consistency in training. I've been training as a triathlete since I started. I was never a runner or a cyclist or a swimmer before I started, so I've always been a triathlete. I've never really done any running races. I've always run off the bike, so it's always been about how fast I can run off the bike. Now they all add up <coughs> for the big picture in Kona. Hopefully. It's, it's, been, <laughs> yeah. it's been five months. You've had some time to reflect on that. What key points are you going to take from what you learned last year into this year? I think first and foremost is the experience that I got from my first Ironman. Kona was my first time racing the full distance and I learned a lot just being out there for the duration. I learned a lot about myself and pacing and, and strategies and, and all that sort of stuff. So that's that's going to be huge taking taking what I learned from last year into this year will be great but also obviously you know the the damage is done in the bike was done in the bike last year and I really need to pick up my um, cycling and hopefully be in the same zip code as Chrissy this year. Sure. Julie Dibbins has been the first to say that Chrissy Wellington can be beaten. Do you think that's possible and if so how are you going to do that? Chrissy Wellington's 100% beatable. Um, I think, especially in the last couple of years, she's been so dominant on the bike and on the run. And I think now there are other women that are running under three hours. And so Chrissy only really runs around three hours or just over. Basically, what needs to happen is the whole women's field needs to start riding a lot stronger. And once we're closer to her, I, you know, I don't know how she'll re react with a little bit of pressure. And hopefully, we can we can bring the heat. 
Well, it, it'll be one heck of a race for sure. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us. We Pleasure. appreciate you having you here. Thanks. That's the show for this week. We'll see you again on Monday, April 12th with an exclusive Sarah Haskins interview. And for everything running, be sure to check out Run Center right here on competitor.com. Thanks for watching.